catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com. At the most basic level, right, Google and other search engines, they need to be able to find, crawl, in fact, like, they need to be able to picture it and then index the pages on your website. So if they're ever going to succeed at SEO, technical SEO is the most important until it isn't. So you, you, you have to build the fundamental blocks of your SEO strategy with technical. Hmm, interesting. Now, how does this whole technical SEO work? At this point, I'm going to try to go into some technical things, but I'll try to make it as relatable and understandable as possible. So when it comes to building, a, of course, first of all, you need to have a website. Uh, like I've been hammering in previous episodes of this of this discourse, you need to even get a website before you can decide you want to do SEO. So when you have a website, the next thing is to ensure that your website is secure, right? I'm sure a lot of people don't know because browsers like Chrome and Safari are very advanced nowadays. So when you visit a website, the website is not secure. Chrome will tell you that, hmm, you're about to enter an unsafe space. Do you want to go? Do you want to advance or you want to go back to a safe space? Same thing with Safari. So if your website is like that, that it doesn't have, it's not secure, right? The security of websites is determined by the HTTPS, the URL. At the beginning of the URL, the HTTPS nomenclature is very important in terms of if the website is secure, it has the S behind the HTTP. If it's not, then it doesn't have the S, right? So it's very important that at least when you are building out your website to tell your des- your designer, your developer to ensure that the website is secure. And it's all about just getting SSL. <laughs> I don't want to go into too many technical. No, let's but... let's let's just have the S. I'll 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 do follow up questions, and I'd like to know what the or those things you're mentioning. You know, we, we may actually have to get into a little details or a little explanation of them. So just just run with it. It's fine. Okay. So just asking the your website your website developer or designer to ensure that your website has SSL which is secure socket layer right so when your website is secure you need to ensure that Google can even find it right at the very high level Google will eventually find and crawl every every content on the internet right but they need to allocate their crawl budgets to websites that are more traffic so if your website is new you need to submit your Types to Google to allow them to crawl it. You understand? So you need to, you know, get um, software or tools like Search Console set up. You understand? And then submit your website to Google. And nothing that helps Google to find your website content is when you have a site map. So a site map is basically. Remember when we were young and we used to play all those adventure games, and there's usually a map at the at the bottom left or bottom right of the screen, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's how the sitemap works in the eyes of Google too. When you give Google a sitemap, it basically tells them, okay, this is where we can find everything on this website. So you give, you give yourself or your website a higher chance of ranking. That, of course, that's not the only factor, but you give your website a higher chance of ranking when you submit a site that has all the pages on your site on it. Another thing is then your website structure. Right, before you even go into Submitting a map to Google, right? You need to determine, okay, this is how you want to structure your website. So when when you're building out, when you're thinking of creating a website for your business, you need to think of, okay, your product, your service offering, where you want to serve, how do you want to structure the pages on your website? Then I'll make sure that they all lead into each other, right? They lead the users to the most important parts of your website. So for example, if someone lands on your own page, what is the call out on your own page that leads the user to another part of your website? Lead them down the funnel that eventually makes them to convert, right? Apart from linking your website pages together for the users, linking website pages together helps Google to crawl because Google Google is a bot, right? Google bots follows the links from page to page on your website. So the more they can follow the links, the more they will be able to find content on your website and eventually, you know, index and rank it. Another thing about technical SEO is duplicate content. When you have duplicate content on your website, it confuses Google to like, what do I rank? Which of, which of this content do I rank? And when Google is confused about what to rank, it just doesn't rank any of them. You know, you rather go and rank websites from your competitors or other websites on the internet. You understand? So another one is your robots. .txt file. So robots.txt is a 
it's a file on your website that tells Google and other search engines, right, what and what not to crawl on your website. So you can find the robot.txt file of your website at your, your domain.com forward slash robot.txt. So it's just like a text-based file that literally gives instructions to Google and other bots that, okay, these particular pages on my website, crawl them, index them, rank them. But these ones, don't crawl them, you understand? So I can give an example. So for e-commerce sites now, of course, you will not want Google to crawl and index your checkout page or your add to cart page. You get what I mean? So mm -hmm. those are pages that are, should be private only to the user of the, of the website, the customer, not open to everyone that does Google. You get what I mean? So also we have meta robots. So meta robots, they are like HTML instructions that you give your you, you give to bot Google and other bots, another search engine bots about what pages to follow and index on your website. So you can have some content that you don't want Google to index, but you want them to be able to crawl it so that they can find other content on your website, right? Then you have some that you just don't want them to even see at all. You don't want them to crawl at all. You get so I know I know this might sound a little bit like technical, but if you can, if you could just you know as I'm saying them, you could just like do a, like a deep dive further further along like later on. It really help. So another thing is 404 errors. 404 is basically you know when someone visits a page on your website that does not exist, right? It brings out a 404 error or page not found, right? So you need to make sure that every every page on your website that is important to you can be found by users and of course by Google. When your pages on your website are leading to 404 errors, of course Google would not rank that kind of page. You understand? So of course, last but not least is page speed. Page speed refers to how fast your website loads. So studies have shown that websites that load three seconds and under have a higher chance of converting, right? Converting users, converting prospects into customers. You understand? So the moment your website is loading over three seconds, it's it's a bad signal to Google. And of course, Google wants to rank websites that provide the best experience to users. So when users come to your website, they see that it's not loading fast, they, they bounce and they go back to the Google results page, search results page. Then the signals to Google that, hmm, let's push this website further down. You understand? So that's like a very, very huge technical SEO aspect that to consider page speed. And then image optimization as well. Some people, because they are, they are more designers than SEO, they, when, they, when they build out their website, they just use very, very large pictures. They use very, very beautiful, aesthetic, pleasing looking pictures that, of course, they are, look, they are pleasing to the high, but they are too heavy and they, they make the website to load slow, like way slower. So optimizing images on the website also help to increase speed and, of course, technical SEO, um, it scores you some technical SEO points in the eyes of Google. Then we have mobile friendliness as well. So mobile friendliness is, it attends to the fact that most people access websites these days via their mobile phone. So if your, if your website is not mobile friendly, when people cannot really consume the content on your website on mobile, right, then Google will not rank you because Google has even shifted to mobile first index, right? They, they index the content on your website first as it looks like on the mobile version before they not even index the desktop version. You get what I mean? So you need to always ensure that your website is responsive, that it's, it's, and this, this is a thing for developers and designers anyway. When you are building a website, ensure that they are responsive, they can appear awesome on mobile as well as on the desktop. Then we have things like the core web vitals, right? Core web vitals refer to, yeah, is a new set of metrics that Google looks at to determine the user experience or page experience of a website or a page, right? So core web, there are three core web vitals. The first is, and I'm going to try to like um, explain them very quickly. We have first input delay, cumulative layout shift, and largest content, content footprint. So largest content footprint refers to the how long it takes for the largest the largest element on your website to load, right? So that could be an image, a video, as the case may be. So if it takes that largest element on your website to load, if it takes it 10 seconds to load, then your largest content footprint score will be 10 seconds. 
particular delivery simply refers to how long it takes for your website to respond to interactions from the user. So when your website loads and then the user clicks a button, right? How fast does it take your, your website to respond to the clicking of that button, right? So you should always try to keep your first input delay um, score as low as possible. And the last one is cumulative layout shift. So you, I'm sure you, this is something that a lot of users on the internet are familiar with. When you visit a website, they've riddled the web pages with so much advertisement that you would want to click on something. And before you know it, an ad has pushed whatever you wanted to click down and then you find yourself clicking the ad and taking you to a page that you do not want to go to. So that's basically called layout shift, cumulative layout shift on the website. So the, the lesser that happens on your website, the higher the chances of you ranking in terms of um, technical SEO and Google. You get what I mean? So try to keep that as low as possible. Try to keep your first input delay to as low as possible. And as well as how long it takes for the largest element of your website to load, which is largest content footprint. Wow, that's uh, some. So I I didn't know before now that websites get penalized if that's the word. If a lot of adverts on the website and you're trying to find your way around getting the content and you keep clicking and clicking mistakenly on the ads and most times you just have to in a fit of anger just leave the page and you know find exactly. whatever you're looking for somewhere else. Exactly. So let me clarify quickly. It's not wrong for you to have adverts on your website. What is what is not good practice is that your adverts change position change the way the website the, exactly change the position of the content on the website. So you can see probably someone is reading a very lovely article that you a very lovely content that you put out and they are trying to scroll. In the, the moment that finger wants to touch this like just swipe their phone um, their phone screen up or their desktop um, trackpad up you find them that if, like there's something that just pops up on your website and hard or it could it might not even be an ad it could be just something else right right and they find themselves clicking something that they didn't want they didn't intend to click so google like tracks and measures all these kinds of things and rates them as bad user experience and 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 these websites can actually find a way around this right yes absolutely so there are different ways to not just i know i spoke about about a lot of different technical seo optimizations that you can do and they have like many things you can do to actually do like optimize your websites like technical seo wise yeah but for example before before we get into that let's let's uh let me quickly run through we just talked about the elements right the elements and the elements of scm technical seo i just want to draw some attention to some like you mentioned the structure of the website who actually does this who decides what the structure of the website because you you said this is very important when you're starting out uh, you should decide what the structure of your website should look like and the things around it who should be in charge of it which role or which job description fits deciding the structure and making sure it's you have a good structure for your website okay in an ideal world it's supposed to be the seo guy or the seo specialist on the team but i know that why not why not live in an ideal world and most most of the people that are going to try to build websites for themselves are going to be, you know, small business owners and stuff that they just want to get their product out there very quickly, right? They don't want to get their website out there very quickly. So ideally, it's the job of a web designer or developer in conjunction with the SEO person. The SEO person being very conversant with the idea that the business owner wants to convey on their website. He understands the product or service very well and knows, okay, this is how we should build out these pages in terms of structure but in the absence of an seo person and is this you are the owner of your business you want to get your website out it's, of course then it would then be your job to in conjunction with your you know developer right so let me just like say something very quickly about structure let's say for example you have a four-page website or a five-page website right you should build out your website in how do i visualize this over in audio <laughs> so the home page first and then let's say the home page is a box right then you draw a line from under that box as the home page and then it, that line branches out into five different you know into four different other boxes so in each of those boxes you have your about page your service page your contact page and then maybe something about privacy policy and all those kinds of things right i'm not this is just an example it's not mm-hmm. it's not it's not right 
So let's say from your about page, it's you draw a line from there also, and that that line branches out into the different team members you have, maybe a CEO, your a page does hypothetical again. You see a page about your CEO, a page about your CTO, a page about your marketing guy, a page about your delivery guy, things like that. Then the services page, you draw a line from it as well, and you branch it out into the different services you offer, right? A page about your, say for example, your SEO services, and down about your web design services, and down about your email marketing services. So on and on like that, you map out the structure of how your pages would be like even before you start building. It's even, when you do that before, it gives the developer or designer a very clear idea of what you're trying to achieve with your website and they can build accordingly. Mm, okay, that's very, very good. Now, let's look at page speed and security of the website. You said, aside you know, mobile friendliness, image optimization, something I noted was page speed and making sure that your website is secure. Um, if I if I'm, if I want to get into that, who do I hand, hand that to uh, and who can take care of that? Okay, so with respect, with respect to sec- website security, at the point of registering the website domain and buying web hosting that your developer will handle buying SSL. Remember I spoke about SSL, which is Secure Surface Layer. Yeah. So SSL is basically like a protocol for establishing secure links between network computers. You get what? That, that sounds very that sounded very technical <laughs> just say it again <laughs> and it'll be, it'll be fine just say it again so that it, it'll be fine so ssl is like a, is the way secured computers or the internet speak to each other mm-hmm. i'm just yeah. it's very very lame yeah, language that's fine. Sure you get. so you need to buy a, a an ssl to add it on like on top of your domain so when you have an ssl on your domain that's where I mean, you know when you visit website you see that padlock sign yes. on the address bar mm-hmm. exactly that signals that the website is secure if you click on the you can do it right now if you're in front of your computer everyone yeah. just click on the padlock sign you will see your if you if you're on chrome to tell you your connection is secure yes. your information in case if it's passwords credit card information everything is hidden it's private you get what i mean so that is what an SSL is, and it's, your, it's the responsibility of your developer or your designer, or web designer, as the case may be, to purchase an SSL certificate while they are purchasing on your registering your domain and purchasing your web hosting. So if you have a web designer or web developer and that knows his chops, right, he should undo that, that aspect of technical SEO for you. Okay. Then with respect to page speed. It's page speed is a collaborative effort between everyone, every every content creator on your website, as well as even your web designer and developer, right? So the responsibility of the web designer is in the sense that, or developer is in the sense that they need to minify the JavaScript, CSS files, HTML. They need to ensure that those the code base of the website is very very light. You get what I mean? It says that it's not bloated, it's not too heavy. You understand? So that is the responsibility of the web designer as a developer. I don't want to delve too, too deep into it. It's called minifying JavaScript, minifying CSS and stuff like that. Any web developer that knows his jobs will understand that perfectly, right? And then on the side of the content creators on the website, they need to ensure that the images that they use are compressed images or they are next gen format images. So next gen web format are uh, maybe images in WebP, jpg and png and then of course these images have to be compressed to as small as possible before then they then go on on the website if you need to upload videos to your website consider uploading the videos to a video hosting service like youtube or wista or vimeo then embed those things on your website as opposed to uploading the videos directly to your website because it's the, all these resources that are adding to your website, they make the website load slower. They affect the performance of the website. So another thing that the um, web developer is responsible for is the server speed and the server response times and stuff like that. And I don't want to, de- because if I delve into that, it will be too technical for or, like for people to understand over, over audio, right? Just ensure, the developer or the web designer has to ensure that the server speed is as optimized as possible, if I could say it that way. Understand. 
Yes, yes. So, very interesting. Now, we started out with the fact that uh, the structure of the website has to be dealt with from the get-go, from the beginning. But how about a website that is already running? How can we improve the technical SEO of a website that's already running? We're not trying to start a new website. We have one already. Okay, perfect. So, it's, it's, it's basically a very similar process. Just run through that list I said at the beginning of, the, of, this, of this call, right? Indexability. Can Google, you ask yourself, can Google index this website? Can Google actually see the content? Can they read the page content on the website? Can they render it? Can they index it? Right? The easy way to do that is type in, let's say, for example, Facebook or something. Just type, go to, your, go to Google, type in, site which is s-i-t-e colon paystack.com and it's the search but it's the search bar you would see what that does is it signals to google that you only want to see index results on google from only paystack.com so just try that for your website your domain.com s-i-t-e colon your domain.com and it will sign into duty tell you to bring out all the pages that are indexed on your website on google to tell you how many of those pages are on Google and if your website is even visible to Google. Then you need to check your sitemap. Then when you check your sitemap, you you ensure that your sitemap is submitted to Google in the first place. Then does it does your sitemap have valid URLs? Then another thing is your robust.txt file. Does your website have a robust.txt file? Is it found? And if it's found, does it disallow anything important? Does it allow important things? Ensure that the rules and instructions there are valid. You get what I mean? Then your meta robot, then are you blocking any important pages from, from ranking on Google or from being indexed on Google? If I could say that. So you find you find some some website owners, they will create websites with very great content and then they will keep complaining that oh my, my content is great, it's good, it's superb, and I followed all the best practices, but then I'm not seeing any traffic. When you do like a small deep dive, you find out that hmm, they've actually instructed Google to not index the pages on their website, wow. right? So we need to ensure that those, uh, like all, you index the pages, you, you allow Google to index the pages you want that are important to you. And then the ones that are not really important in terms of indexation, you leave them out. And things like 404 pages, like you ensure that there are no broken broken pages on your website there are not broken links on your website all the pages like when people visit a link on your website it actually it leads to an actual page so internal linking is linked is to relate is related to page structure the website structure when you set out your website structure internal linking is basically what connects each page to each other to another to one another like the analysis i gave earlier the illustration i gave earlier where the own page leads to five different pages when I say leads to it basically means you are linking to the other pages from the own page. So that's basically what internal linking is. Are all the important pages of your website, are they linked to each other? Can they, like if I, if, I'm sure you visit some websites and then they just, you find out that before you know it, from that one page of the website you visited, you basically visited like five or six other pages because they keep internal linking within their pages and you keep um, clicking on them. Hope there are no orphan pages on your website. By orphan pages, I mean that like website pages that no internal link is coming to it. You understand? Ensure that there are no orphan pages on your on your website. Then for page speed, is your mobile page speed okay? Is your desktop page speed okay? There are tools for you to check that. Page does Google page speed insights. It should lead you to a, the first result is a Google tool is for free. Just put your website in there to break down your mobile page speed. And your desktop page speed with a list of like recommendations that you can do to improve your page speed then of course image optimization are your images optimized do they have so apart from even um the size of the image right images are supposed to have alternative text right alternative text for images simply means it's for you know there are some people that comes like they for example blind people cannot see images on the website right but they are I don't know, maybe they are Braille or maybe they are audio book. Yeah, they, can, they, they can read, read the text. Book, can read the text. Perfect. So you need to always add out alternative text to your images. And, Apart and, from and, for, and for those, sorry, for those who are actually wondering, there's something called, there's something, it's written like ALT um, text, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Alt text, ALT text. Yeah. 
So, okay. similar to blind people, Google is a bot that just crawls website pages and renders them. It cannot actually see images either. You understand? So, wow. for Google to understand what your image is about, it's, you need to, you know, describe the image with alternative text. You understand? And that's like alternative text is very, is very good when you're trying to attract um, organic traffic from Google images. You understand? Because Google can then understand, oh, okay, this is what this image is about. When someone goes to Google and searches for an image, right? You know, when people search for something on Google and they click that image tab on top, mm -hmm. you will see a very long list of images. You understand? For your image to even appear at the top of that, alternative text is very important. You get what I mean? Wow. So, of course, mobile friendliness. That one is, is your website mobile friendly. It's very easy for you to check this. Just visit your website on your mobile phone. Is there a Are you able to see all the elements of the website as you would see it on the desktop? Can you access it? Can you click on the links and stuff like that? One thing that I didn't mention when I was going through the elements is canonical tags. So what canonical tags means is, okay, let's say you you're, you visit a restaurant, right? And okay, let's say you visit a restaurant and they have like five similar meal options, or and you don't you're not sure which one to pick, right? And then your friend just says, oh. All these things are similar. Just pick this particular one. So it's similar to how it's similar to your website. When you when you when let's say for example you own an e-commerce website, right? And there are different variations of a particular type of content on your website. Let's say you have red shoe, blue shoe, green shoe, and orange shoe, right? And of course, because they are different, the content that for each of those pages will be the same. The only difference would be the color red, the color blue, the color pink, the color green. You get what I mean? So to tell Google that, okay, this is the original one that you should pick or index and ignore the rest, you use canonical tags. I hope that was not to, I tried to, you know, use an analogy, but it still sounds like it is to be complex. Yeah, so for, for those who uh, do not exactly understand the very, very deep, technical terms just knowing the names of these terms make it easier for you to find out and do more research and say okay get more details from an seo specialist or those who would actually do the job and just knowing the word actually helps you find a way to you know you understand this thing and by the time you tell whoever is handling your project the person says okay this person understands something to this point so it's like an eye-opener it's not exactly everything but you know it's good for a start yeah yeah perfect so this series on search engine optimization is to help businesses improve their online visibility and we hope that we've been able to solve some basic problems for you and for your business. You can access our previous episodes on what SEO is and its importance on also how to get your website to number one on Google and how to market your content with SEO. And now we're talking technical SEO and its importance. You can head over to the catch up section of our website, www.africatechradio.com. You search for and listen to these episodes. You could also leave us comments on WhatsApp. You know, you could text or send a voice note on 913 one seven six six if you're texting from outside nigeria kindly add plus two three four thanks a whole lot david adiemo the seo specialist of this series for the time and for the insight spent with us sure sure you're welcome you're very welcome if if anyone has any because i know this was a lot in technical terms were a lot if anyone has any questions or any any clarity they need any clarifications they can always check me out on twitter you can find me on Twitter at Dave Adeyemo, D-A-V-E-A-D-E-Y-E-M-O. Okay, let, let's also have Instagram and um, LinkedIn. Okay, Instagram is also Dave Adeyemo, Instagram.com forward slash Dave Adeyemo, um, Twitter as well. Then LinkedIn is David Adeyemo. Okay, thank you very much. You can reach him out, uh, reach out to him rather, and um, you know, just get your SEO issues solved. Thank you very much, David, once again. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. I hope we can, you know, have more discussions on this. We're done with this series, but then you know, let's we might decide to dive deeper into the major things or the other issues for those who um, want to go into more technicalities. You know, no worries. Okay.
Thanks for listening and don't forget to catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com.